In every relationship, the inevitable is conflict and disagreement. And owing to the fact that you and your partner are human beings who were raised from different backgrounds, different culture, and different experiences, you are all adults with your own mindset and perspective, the process of becoming one will take some hard work through effective communication. In today's video, I want to speak about relationship harmony, overcome conflict and disagreement in your relationship through effective communication. Number one, the disagreement is not a threat to the relationship, but it is an opportunity. I know it is a natural tendency for us to feel like when we disagree or when we have some conflict in our relationship, that it is a threat to the relationship that is leading to a breakup that is going to tear us apart. And that is the mindset that will keep you from knowing how to navigate disagreement and conflict. The fact is that when you have a disagreement with your partner or there is a conflict in your relationship, there is a dislike in your heart or your partner's heart regarding a particular situation. Whether it was an action or an inaction or a word said, there is something that your partner dislikes and that is an opportunity for you to know that dislike because they'll be passionate and show you the extent to which they don't like whatever happened or whatever you said to them or whatever situation that brought the conflict. So it is for you to know when we disagree, it is an opportunity for me to get to know my partner better. It is an opportunity for me to get a deeper understanding with my partner. And with this, we can say that disagreements and conflict would actually help you deepen your connection with your partner. And also, it will bring clarity to your relationship. So it is not a trait. And I would love to say this if you're watching and you are someone who says, no, I don't want disagreement. I don't want any conflict. So you avoid disagreement by not speaking up or opening up about the things that doesn't sit well with you by being quiet and withholding honesty. That action which you perform and you feel like, oh, it is helping you to avoid breakup in the relationship, you are actually piling up offense in your heart. It can help you to avoid breakup, but it cannot help you to avoid breakdown. And you don't need to get yourself to a place whereby you have so much unmet expectation because you're not speaking up because you are not being yourself. You are trying to avoid having disagreements and conflicts with your partner. And because of this, there's so much in play. And at the end of the day, breakdown is inevitable for you. And scripture says that unrelating disappointment leaves you at sick. But a sudden good break can turn life around. By the time you keep on avoiding disagreement, you are avoiding honesty. You are avoiding the opportunity to be yourself. And at that point, disappointment is your friend. Because you are going to be disappointed when you don't speak up. You are going to be disappointed and a lot of this disagreement will lead you to a place of breakdown. So it's better to speak up and disagree and get to agree. Such that if this person is not for you, you people will know on time. If this dating relationship is not good for you, you know on time. If your marriage needs some therapy, you can go for the therapy. But do not withhold honesty from your partner. Number two, face the problem, not your partner. We have a tendency that whenever we have issues, we want to attack each other. So you have to learn that that tendency of attacking your partner, you should drop it. Whenever there's an issue, address the issue. The thing is not about you trying to say, oh, I'm trying to appease my partner. It's not about appeasing your partner. It is about facing the issue and not your partner, knowing that the issue is your problem. Your partner is not your problem. So let me give this scenario. For example, you go to your partner and ask your partner to cease communication with a certain friend because it is bothering you. And maybe the situation is like, oh, babe, Darling, I need you to stop talking to this person because I know for certain that you are cheating on me with this person. I don't know what reaction your partner would come with. Because at this point, that's an accusation. You're not even trying to ask them and feel that something is off here. You are attacking them right on. That is an accusation. And you're not even facing the problem. What is the problem though? If your partner has a particular friend, maybe he's a guy and he has a girlfriend, whom is so close and gives much attention and it makes you insecure. 
What are you to do? How should you address that situation? Are you to go to your partner and start attacking them? Oh, you are cheating on me. I really know. Don't even deny. Don't even try to say that. Don't even try to defend yourself. No, you don't go that way. Especially when you don't even have any evidence. You would want to talk things out and face the problem. The problem is you are jealous at this point because you love the person and jealousy is not wrong. If you really love someone, you're going to be jealous when you see them give someone else so much attention. So you go to your partner, babe, I'm becoming jealous of the too much attention you are giving to this person. So that I feel like something needs to be done because it's throwing me off. It's making me uncomfortable. Now the good response a good partner should bring is, okay, I'll put this into consideration. I will think about this, but I will not be able to just cease communication with this friend because we've been friends for so long. So I will actually work on reducing the amount of attention or the level of attention I give to this person. This is a bad response that the person would give. Oh, is that my problem? That is your problem. You are insecure. That's a bad response. Or maybe in a situation whereby you have your own reason for feeling insecure or jealous because maybe you were in a situation with an ex-partner who had a girlfriend and before you knew, you realized that they were already doing some things and behind your back and it, bro it broke your heart. Or you had a father who had a poor representation of what a man does or what a man looks like through maybe things that happen. This could be the basis for you to feel that way. Now it will be the duty of a good partner. Once the problem is being faced, you keep facing the problem and not the person. So that if your partner brings this to you and says, babe, this is what I'm feeling and I have context for why I'm feeling this way. You should try to validate your partner and explain yourself and the situation that it is not what they see. I know there are so much about this that needs to be said, which the point is face the problem, not your partner. Number three, communicating through tension. For you to have harmony in your relationship, you cannot avoid all the tensions that come into that relationship. We have a tendency of avoiding tension. I don't want any tension with this person because like we are always eating our head. Like we never get resolution to our tension. In fact, if you have like five minutes of good communication and laughing, the next 10 minutes, 20 minutes, we are going to be fighting. Like every of our conversation ends up with a fight. You need to learn how to navigate communicating through tension. That is what you need to have harmony in your relationship. The first thing you need to know is that when there's a tension in your relationship, you should find a common ground. And the analogy I would give is that the common ground is you admitting where you were wrong, apologizing for the wrong, and then validating your partner and talking about the issue. This is a mutual thing. It is not a one-sided thing. Whenever there is a tension in a relationship, we always have a tendency of trying to show our partner and prove to them where we were right. It's kind of like we are going on a debate and we are competing and we are fighting each other. <laughs> yeah, like with this following few points of mine, I hope I've been able to convince you that I am right and you are wrong and we are always like bumping our heads together. But the issue is we've not been facing the issue. We've been facing the person. So if you pick from the previous point, do not face the person, face the problem. You will come to this place of knowing that when I communicate true tension, what I should do is instead of trying to attack my partner and point out their fault and fault find them, let me find where I was wrong. And my partner, if they know well and find where they were wrong, because we have to sit down and talk about how to navigate this. I will find where I was wrong. My partner finds where they were wrong. And I come off and say, I was wrong here. If my partner agrees and finds where they were wrong and say, okay, I was wrong here, we will find a common ground to communicate. Now, to make this practical, once there's a tension, somebody will have to take responsibility to make sure that that tension is resolved, which is, I would come to my partner and tell them, okay, I was wrong with the manner of approach I came to you. I apologize for that. And I don't have to Make it look like I'm throwing the apology. I'm sorry. I have to say I'm sorry for what? I'm sorry for the way I spoke to you. I'm sorry for the way I tore you down through my words. I'm sorry for the kind of words I used on you. So sorry about that. But this is the issue. What you did or what you said or the situation that I saw really got me so upset. And this is 
we need, really need to talk about this. Let's get an understanding about this so that we can resolve it. But if you are to find this is where I was right, I was right. You did wrong. So I had every right to say whatever I needed to say to you. No, the tension will not decrease. Instead, it will spark up a fire and a fight. So the best thing is both people need to come to a place of humility and say, okay, I admit I was wrong the way I spoke to you. Or I was wrong with what I said. I was wrong with what I did. I apologize. I'm really sorry about that. So now you talk about the issue. This will help you navigate tension and communicating effectively. Scripture says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Number four, us against the world. For you to have a relational harmony or harmony in your relationship, you have to come to a place whereby you know you and your partner are a unit. You are a team. Your partner is not your rival. Neither are you your partner's rival. You are partners, which is People who cooperate and work together. People who fight for each other, not to fight against each other. So the picture of us against the world should be present in your relationship. And I will explain that deeper by making you know what is the world. Because we could easily say us against the world means anybody that is coming against us, we have to fight that person. Or anybody that is coming to tear our relationship down, we have to fight that person. And if you talk in the context of marriage, the scripture says what God has joined together let not man put asunder, which means the word man in that scripture meant human being. In that relationship, which is the man and the woman, can become the ones who put asunder the union and their commitments. How do they put that asunder? That's where we come to this explanation of us against the world. The world inside of us is full of selfishness, it's full of envy, pride, ego, arrogance. That's our world. Each individual wants to seek what is good for them, self-gratification. We love that, we love attention, we love to get things for ourselves. That's the human being in its degenerate form. And some of us have a world whereby we are control freaks. We want to control people and control situation and control everything and so many other things. So when you come to say us against the world, it means this union, me and you, us against my pride, us against my arrogance, us against my ego, us against my triggers, us against my insecurity, us against everything that would erupt from me to affect us. That is the picture. That is how to come to relational harmony. We are working together. Such that when you have an issue with your partner, you tell your partner, we are in this together. You are not my rival. You are my partner. And it will be such a blessing for you and your partner to come to such a place whereby there is this kind of harmony in your relationship. It will be a loving thing to experience by both of you. So that when there is this issue, you say, us against the world, us against my ego. I will always get my ego crushed to cherish what we share together, to cherish us. I will not allow my pride to come in the way of what we share, of this love that we share. I will not allow my selfishness to come in the way because love is not selfish. I won't allow my anger tendencies to come in the way because I can be angry but I won't sin with it. I will be offended but I won't allow the offense to affect us and this union that we share. We will talk through it. If this is the heart of every relationship, the health of that relationship cannot be stalled, it cannot be stunted, it cannot be stopped. And scripture says, no kingdom can endure if it is divided against itself. So you have to know when you get into a relationship or if you are in your marriage, you both are a unit. You are a team. You are together. So it's both of you against anything, against even your own human tendencies. So that's why you have to come to a place whereby you are vulnerable with your partner because some people are struggling with some war on the inside. Some are struggling with lust, with pornography, with masturbation, and so many other things, illicit desires. And if you don't bring your partner into the know, these things will be affecting the relationship and you both will not know how to deal with it because they do not know what the problem is and where it comes from. And you keep denying, you keep being defensive because you don't want to tell the truth. You don't want to be vulnerable. But if you come to a place where you tell your partner, look, I'm struggling with porn. This is not something that started now and it's affecting my mental health. It's affecting the way I see you. It's affecting our sex life as married couples. 
is affecting me the way I view women. I'm lost in. So you need to work together. It is when you tell your partner, a good partner was okay. We are in this together. It's us against this thing. Let's work together with this. Let's go meet a therapist. Let's go look for help. Let's pray about it. Number five, become a peacemaker, not a peacekeeper. Now, the truth here is that a peacekeeper will always avoid issues, tensions, disagreements, and everything and become silent and quiet even when it is not necessary. All in the guise of, I don't want fights. I don't want disagreements. I don't want any issue. I just want peace. But that is not peace because you're not even having peace inside. You're just being silent and dying in silence. Such action can actually build a lengthy relationship. It can get you guys for so long. You can endure each other and repeat the same pattern for 10 years. Oh, 10 years anniversary. You just celebrated one year in 10 places. Nothing changed. Nobody grew. You are the same people. Maybe you have grown, but since you are shielding yourself from each other, there is no effective communication. You are keeping peace, but the relationship is not healthy. It's toxic. It gives room for all sort of manipulation and abuse and toxicity. And you need to push that mindset away from you. I believe that was the mindset most of our parents, like especially women of old had, such that they would be quiet and silent and become slaves in their own home. To their husbands, yeah, they were subservient and that wasn't submission. Submission did not mean suppression whereby they are being destroyed in the guise of I'm submitting to my husband. And I would say there are also men who be like, I'm a peacekeeper. I don't want trouble. So they are just quiet and they don't take responsibility in their relationship. You have to come to the knowledge that being a peacekeeper will not help your relationship. You have to become a peacemaker. A peacemaker will address the issue in the relationship head on. Let's talk. Let's work together. Let's cooperate. Let's communicate. Let's get this through. Let's get this out of the way. That is a peacemaker. A peacemaker is not someone that is avoidant of issues. It's even someone that embraces issues and have the, the, the capacity to actually resolve those issues. And scripture says, you are blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete and fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. That is from message translation. In other translations, it says, blessed are the peacemakers. It did not say blessed are the peacekeepers. So being a peacemaker, you have to know that when your partner offends you, the natural response to that um, offense is you trying to say, okay, I will pay them back. I will make them get a taste of the medicine. But then if you know that this didn't feel good, the scripture says, do unto others what you would like them to do unto you. But this is one thing I always do say, that you would never know what you would like people to do unto you, especially the wrong things, until they do it. You would never like somebody to steal from you until they steal from you. But that is not a leverage for you to go and steal from another person and be like somebody stole from me. So it's not a leverage because they hurt you and offended you that you have to pay back. It is for you to learn, I did not like this. I will not give this to them. But now it doesn't mean you should choose silence. It means you go to them and let them know, this offended me. I did not like it, but I'm not going to pay you back. I just need you to know, I don't appreciate such. This is a relationship. You have to let your partner know your dislikes. Instead of you guys playing cat and dog, you know, they did this to you and you do back. Oh, they cheated on you, you cheat back. Whatever it is, make peace and cooperate to work together. But if you want to keep peace, okay, cheat, I cheat. Do me, I do you. The relationship might actually crash. And you both, you will not even grow in the process. Number six, let go dismissiveness and defensiveness. There is a tendency in all of us to just be defensive when your partner tells you a problem. Like, they are telling you this is what you did wrong and you are trying to like defend yourself. No, 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 that wasn't a picture. This was that and that. No, don't be dismissive of a problem that your partner tells you, even though it does not look like a problem to you. If it offended them, if it made them feel uncomfortable and uneasy, it is a problem to them. And I know the problem that a lot of relationships have today is because so many people are dismissive, which is a narcissistic syndrome. They're only thinking about themselves. So as long as it wasn't a problem to them, it doesn't matter. It wasn't a problem. And this goes on and people cannot have harmony in relationship. You have to learn that you don't have to dismiss 
your partner's opinion, whatever they said, and however it sounded to you, might have sounded childish, take it and consider it. There's a reason for that to even help you to know their mindset. Once you consider it, it will help you to understand them even better. You don't know what they have been through. And if you don't consider it, if you throw it out of the window, you will not have the opportunity to get to sit down with them and they tell you, look, this is my experience. I'm, I was being triggered by something I experienced. Maybe I was abused as a young person, as a young girl, a young boy, or maybe this and that happened. You never get to know that. You'll be lost. Or oh, this is how my family situation was. Not as if I was abused, but the mindset that I was given from home is what is making me this way. So before you get to a place that you are defensive and you start saying little things make me angry, little things make me angry, little things make no one angry. Little things do not make your partner angry. The fact is that once you are always dismissive and defensive, you avoid effective communication. And the more you avoid effective communication, the more you pile up offense and issues. Because you're always dismissing and then they don't talk again and you who don't communicate again. So there is a pile up of issues upon issue upon issue and no resolution. Since there is no resolution for this issue, once it gets to a place of outburst whereby it is filled up like drops of water fills up a bucket and overflows, you are now like, I can't take this anymore. Now this is the outburst. And then the person will start telling stories of 10 years ago, stories of 5 years ago, stories of the things. You, and you even be surprised, like, did I watch this? Yes, you did them, but you've been dismissive. You've been defensive. And you need to know that dismissiveness will not help you have harmony in your relationship. Just let go your pride and your ego. It is, it's not simple. It's easier said than done. But you have to crush that ego and your pride if you want to have a healthy relationship. And just tell your partner, okay... Let's talk about this. I've offended you and I did not even know. Sorry, my bad. I missed that. I didn't know that that offended you. I'm really sorry about that. And how can we walk through this so that such will not repeat itself? So learn how to validate your partner. Learn how to validate their feelings. Learn how to take their feelings into consideration. That will help your relationship big time. And I feel like this will help you when you're communicating through such situation. Your partner says something and you hear something different, you can ask them, this is what you said, this is what I heard. Is that what you meant? Or maybe in a situation you were exchanging words and, and it's like, I don't even care about it. And you're like, what do you think in your head is like, you don't care about me. So you don't even care about me. And you're like, oh, hey, I know, you don't even care about me. It's your place. You're like, did I hear you well? You don't care about me? Is that what you meant? Did you really mean that? Get into a conversation. I know in the heat of the moment, you may not really be able, but you have to sit down and talk about this and not allow your feelings to overcloud you because you have to know that you are bigger than your feelings. Your feelings are signals. Beyond your feelings, you should take into consideration the fact that sometimes you can misquote someone. So this is what I heard. This is what you said. Before you start becoming defensive and dismissive and abusive, Come to a place of effective communication. Ask for clarity. And then as a partner, learn how to explain yourself to your partner. It is the way forward. Lastly, learn how to have conversational boundaries. Every healthy relationship must maintain a healthy boundary in their conversation and everything they do. One of such boundaries is when you are correcting your partner, learn not to be judgmental. Learn not to judge them. But learn to criticize them constructively. Learn constructive criticism whereby you are not tearing them down, you are not abusive, but then you are correcting in a loving way, speaking the truth in love. You are telling them the truth, but then there is this, you know, kindness attached to it. You are like, I'm not trying to tear you down with this truth, but I just want us to have a better relationship. Do not try to criticize your partner to inflict pain or make them feel hurt. That is the wrong thing to do. Number two, no matter how angry you are or how hurtful the conversation gets and how heated the situation is never use an abusive word on your partner never use a disrespectful word on your partner no matter what you have to learn how to have that boundary that that is a red flag don't use an abusive word on me don't use any res disrespectful words on me be respectful as much as you are angry learn how to be respectful Learn how to speak respectfully. Why is this important? 
Because every little thing you say to your partner, especially the bad things, they stick and they will never forget it. Even after the resolution, they will never forget what you say. Because once you use abusive and disrespectful words on your partner, you are blackmailing them. That's a blackmail on them. And it comes from someone they trust, someone they love, they can never let it go. In fact, even all the sweet words you say to your partner may not really mean a lot to them. But let me tell you, the bad and hurtful words, they will stick to their heart for years. In fact, they will remind you of those words you say to them. So that's why you need to be careful not to be disrespectful in your conversation. That should be a boundary if you want to have a healthy relationship. And that is to say, don't insult your partner and try to tear them down. Scripture says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. So that is what you should learn and put that boundary. As much as you are respectful to everybody else, you go to your office, you are respectful to people, learn to be respectful with your partner as you communicate. Learn to use encouraging words. Learn to use respectful words. And lastly, your tone when you are communicating and your manner of approach really matters. Whenever you are talking with them, you cannot use a harsh tone and convey love. You cannot use a, a weak tone and, and convey seriousness. An unserious tone and then you are like, I'm really, you're not serious. Your tone should tell everything. And you can't use an angry tone and speak the truth in love. So you have to mind your tone because your tone creates triggers. The boundary should be whenever you're angry with your partner, don't try to process on them. Because sometimes you feel like, let me download everything. Everything you think about your partner will not always be sweet and pleasant. You might want to tell them at least just to get them to feel bad, but then do not do that. Don't process on them in the heat of the moment. Learn how to draw back and process so that you know how to relate with them. I hope this video is beneficial and of value to you and you've learned something and you've picked something from it. It is my pleasure because I really love to see healthy relationships and I want your relationship to become healthy. If you want to keep up with this channel, subscribe to this channel, hit the thumbs up on this video and share it to your friends and your family and to your partner make sure your partner watches this i really know that this is something of value and i want you to tell me in the comment section how you've been navigating your arguments and through effective communication and let me know what you think about this video and other things that you would like me to speak about in this channel my name is Uwe Mepan. this is my youtube channel and once again don't forget to subscribe bye bye